Yeah, no, this doesn't look good at all. Oh my god. Let's check. Oh my. 2506. This has to be more than 5%. Wait. Let's pause a bit. You're probably wondering how I got into this mess. Well, it started a few days ago. Hello traders, new day today. It's Tuesday the 13th and uh, it looks like to be a bit of a news jam day. As you can see right here, yeah, I'm filming my monitor, you know, I love this thing. And uh, yeah, we have some uh, CPIs and we also have the Bank of England event, so it may be a choppy day. We'll, nonetheless, we'll check the markets uh, a few hours before starting the sessions. So uh, this lo this looked this looked bad. I mean, we have we don't have clear momentum. We just go up, down, spiky. I don't really want to be in this market right now. Nonetheless, I did some forward testing, and uh, this happened. So my assumption was correct. Price basically went up and down the EMA, created a huge range, and uh, yeah, I had a win, 0.5. But then it was followed by this. It was followed by this and most likely it would have been followed by this. Mm, so a huge chink in the risk management system. I can't say that I didn't foresee this, but uh, there's a huge leap between thinking and actually executing. Okay, so with alarm bells ringing in my head, I decided to call it a day. 14th of June was another news packed day maybe even more than the previous so maybe another sit out day until come and check this awesome market this was up to now as you can see the clock down there it's close to the starting of my session and i would have had tons of entries entries here 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 we absolutely have to give it a shot so this is a post session recording of the trading that i did on the 14th and the uh, as you probably noticed, this beautiful trend kind of continued and this was a huge lapse of judgment by my part. Seeing it now in retrospect seems borderline stupid, but in the moment I got a bit short biased and I will walk you through all the trades. So we had three trades, 0.5 risk and it was lost, 1% risk dead. And the 2% risk, because we got the 2% again, was a bit long of a trade. It was a 1 to 1.5 risk to reward. Because if it were to break, I put my take profit right on this. Basically the, mo the closest order block that I could find here. Yeah, you probably can advocate that I could have gone all the way to the 200 EMA. It was close to the end of my session. So uh, this is what I chose, what I opted to do to target this point of interest right here. And uh, talking about biased, I will keep this short because it's a post session recording. This first entry, well, it's a standard entry. I thought that we will see the end of this ascending formation. It broke with momentum we had a nice retest and based on the confluences that I had and this last inside bar here, I entered the short and it was almost close to getting filled. Unfortunately, it's not because spreads, it's basically I had the bigger than necessary stop loss. In retrospect, the stop loss should have been somewhere around this area and this way the trade would have worked. But uh, yeah, live and learn painful loss and I wasn't at the PC to put it at break even so I had to uh, basically I missed for two minutes and these two things happened and it was way too late <laughs> by this candle going on I saw this break and I started to get short biased and this is something that I have to remedy as soon as possible because I missed along here and I missed along here because I was waiting for a lower low to happen so that I can sell and then my fantasies got fulfilled because I saw this huge candle to the downside I was sure this is momentum don't have really too much history to the left here but I banked on the fact that this candle is a huge one and as you can see my proficiency in trading is pretty much unmatched 
I was a bit in profit during this candle. So um, I don't know if you can see that wick over there. So it was a bit in profit. By the way, I missed another long here. So uh, to, uh, this market was a trending, an awesome one, but bad decisions compared with biasing happen. And then this thing, the lower low that I was expected ish formed. Uh, I was basically more happy to see this lower high or double top, call it as you want. <laughs> I made something like this. Sorry about this, guys. So double tops, lower low, saw the retest, retap into this, entered. And yes, this was a 2% risk. And it was a one to, uh, it was a one to five. It was one to five. I'll show you the dashboard at the end of the video, but it was a one to five trade because I targeted this point of interest. One to one would have been a bit too uh, in between. I mean, the market would have either made a double bottom somewhere around here and shot up again, or it would have gone at least to this point of interest, which marks my 1.5 to one. Okay, so trade recap, 0.5% lost, 1% lost, so minus 1.5% which led to this trade who uh, which had 2% risk and I banked 1.5 to 1 so 3% here minus 1.5 plus 1.5% for the day not bad but it's the second time in a row that I got to 2% risk so I'm inclined to say that this account has the average life expectancy of an Instagram model in the blizzard he's really funny I laughed so hard my ribs hurt yeah, I know I'm a funny guy. 15th of June, so uh, banger news on Euro, some news on dollar as well. Nonetheless, I decided to keep at it. As you see from uh, the chart, the market has already moved a bit to the upside. Before the start of my session, I decided to start my session a bit earlier than usual, and I decided not to repeat the same mistake that I did yesterday and decided to follow the trend. And this happened. I don't really <clears throat> know what to say. I'll be short. Simple buy entry, continuing the trade, break to the downside, ascending channel broke to the downside, sell entry after this nice impulsive candle to the downside, banking on a reversal then it went to the upside oh and this the funny part about this and this is the funny part i kid you not for some reason at 17:50 p.m on the 15th of june i decided to start hedging my trades i didn't do this in the back testing at all but for some reason this want i wanted this to be the highlight of my day and <laughs> and basically, when I saw this red candle, I opened the cell while I had this buy open so that I would hedge it. And if it went to the downside, I would have closed this. And if it went to the upside, I would have extended the take profit. And of course, both positions got wrecked. First, this one. And secondly, this one. So I managed to buy and sell at the same point and lose both positions and then you can imagine I was quite tilted and I opened a 2% risk right here again still biased that the market will go to the downside when this would have been an obvious buy now looking in retrospect but trading doesn't work this way and nonetheless I moved the stop loss, I tampered with it, and then this happened. Yeah, no, this doesn't look good at all. Oh my god. Let's check. Oh my. 2506, this has to be more than 5%. This is the account closing equity for the 15th of June. And in case you're wondering, the maximum daily loss is... Okay. 
15th of June was without doubt the worst trading day I had since I started this challenge. So basically things spiraled out of control, losing 0.5, losing 1% and then risking 2% just to move my stop loss and almost hit the account limit for the day. I have to mention that in the backtesting sessions that I did, the instances which in which I had more than four consecutive losses were extremely rare. Hopefully this won't happen tomorrow because tomorrow I will have to start the day with a 4% risk on a trade. Another important aspect guys, as you probably noticed, I tilted a lot there moving my stop loss. I wasn't disciplined at all. And this brings me to the conclusion that I quite overlooked a bit regarding the post session cool down plan that you should have. Lots of routines online, it helps you balance yourself and it helps you reevaluate the trades in a more cooler mindset than you were while trading. And it may be that fine line between having and not having a challenger funded or a personal balance account, be it as you wish. Again, lots of routines online. I will show you mine. Hello, so I hope you're having a nice Friday. Today I'm off from work and I can already hear the sounds of my account blowing up because I will have to scout the market for a 4% risk trade. Let's go. Okay guys, so this is the trade that I took at the commencement of the Euro session. I wanted to rip the band-aid off. Sorry if I look a mess, but I wanted to record this and to put this video altogether why i entered this trade well ascending triangle formation higher lows equal highs price established above the ema plus added the fact that yesterday was a bullish day i banked on the fact that this level will be broken with momentum nonetheless for a moment it was this position was closed manually at 1.5 to 1 so risking four percent that means something and uh, yeah, I know I usually take one-to-ones, but right here, the one-to-one -one was a bit of a no-man's land. I mean, yeah, it was this range, but I was more interested on this point because this point is the closest supply area and I wanted to target it. So that made my 1.5. The plan, though, was once the position reaches the 1%, I will bank the position as break-even and move the stop loss right here so that i won't jeopardize the whole account even more than i did but uh yeah as you can see it didn't go straight to one percent a bit of a drawdown then it shot all the way up and i closed it manually the market seems to be going uh, a bit up right now but i don't really want to see it this was my week and uh yeah pretty fearful regarding the next week maybe i will have some adjustments to do first of all i may reevaluate the risk profile so maybe sticking to constantly one percent or a two to one three to one extending my r reducing my stop loss that may be a fact post in the comments if you agree with that or post any suggestions that may help me uh secondly yeah maybe the time frame traded isn't that suited for a two to one three to one trade because after 18 pm the market seems to lose its liquidity so i may have to downgrade the number of trades but again not really huge enough sample size but i will keep these aspects in mind and third and most important i'm not really sure if i should switch my blight necromancer to a minion one i have to uh Take a look at that during the weekend. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for all the support. Hopefully the next week will be a better one. This week would have gotten us some nice profit compared to the one that we've got. And uh, that's mostly because of me. But yeah, that's a problem for Monday. Enjoy your weekend, guys. This is my dashboard up to now. See ya.